what does the journey from here to there look like in terms of technological advances? You know, I think that um, uh, total unemployment, I, I'm actually skeptical it'll ever happen, or if it does happen, it may be, I don't know how many thousands of years away. Um, you know, it turns out, just just let, let's, let's demystify AI. What, what can we make AI do and what can we not? It turns out, um, to get a little bit geek and technical, almost all of AI today is about input-output mappings, such as uh, input an email, you know, output, is it spam or not? Or input a picture of what's in front of your car and output the position of the other cars. Um, or uh, input, you know, an x-ray image and output a diagnosis. Does this person have pneumonia or not or some other condition? So that's sort of the one idea, input output, uh, that is creating 99% of the value of the economic value of today's AI system. Turns out this is a ton of economic value. Uh, the large ad platforms have an AI that inputs an ad and some information about a user and outputs, are you gonna click on this ad or not? Uh, because you know, if you can get people to click on more ads, there's direct impact on the bottom line of the large ad platforms. So it's creating tons of economic value. But frankly, this input-output thing, if we think about how much more people do, uh, uh, this is so much more people can do. I don't think anyone in the world uh, uh, has a realistic roadmap for getting the AGI. So I think sometimes the, that, that concept has been, has been overhyped and fear-mongered. Um, I do worry about unemployment. With every wave of technology, looking back, you know, industrial revolution, uh, invention of electricity, I mean, well, all the people working on steam engines, they unfortunately, really sadly, lost their jobs. Or we used to have uh, human-operated elevators, right? You know, there, there was someone sit, mm -hmm. standing in the elevator that would dial it up and down. When someone invented automatic elevators, those jobs went away. So I worry about that for AI. They'll create some amount of um, disruption and, and affect work, but complete total unemployment, this, this input output mapping, I don't see that piece of software replacing, you know, you anytime or me anytime soon. Can you talk about the radiology thing? Cause I read, I read about the work being done at, is it Stanford with the uh, AI and radiology, but the conditions have to be just so, can you just talk about that? Sure. So um, I think that uh, I'm sad about AI and its potential to, to, to improve healthcare. But um, actually, my, some of my friends and I um, uh, worked on AI that can pitch, input a picture of an X-ray and output, you know, what's the appropriate diagnosis. And it turns out we were able to show in the lab that we could diagnose or recognize many conditions as accurately as a board-certified, highly trained doctor radiologist. But it turns out that it worked great if we were to uh, train on data we collected from you know our research from Stanford Hospital. Uh, and then you see if the system did work well on data from the same hospital or from the same set of X-ray machines. It turns out if you take that AI system and walk it down to a different hospital down the street with maybe an older X-ray machine, maybe the technician has a slightly different way of imaging the patient, the performance gets much worse. Whereas any human doctor can walk down the street uh, and diagnose that this other hospital, you know, kind of roughly equally well. So mm -hmm. I think that, um, one of the challenges of AI is we have a lot of prototypes in the lab uh, that you then read about in the news. You know, you see, oh, AI does this what well, diagnosis at human radiologists or something. You may read about it in the news. But it turns out that we collectively in the AI field, we still have a lot of work to do um, to take those lab prototypes and put them into production uh, in, in a hospital setting. It will happen. It's just that this will be some additional years of work before some of the things that, you know, have been promised, right, come, come to fruition. Oh, the medical field is is so ripe for uh, help from this kind of technology. I can think of a million ways in which it could change lives and save lives, but it's really every industry. I know you've been making the point. It's, a, it's every industry that's going to be touched by this eventually. But before we move off the medical field, may I just ask you about a report in the Wall Street Journal that got my attention? Um, okay. Among other things, they're talking about what we should expect in the next few years. Toilets that screen for disease. Uh, it says researchers at Stanford have developed a prototype toilet that uses an artificial intelligence trained camera to track the form of feces and monitor the color and flow of urine. Why is this necessary? Because it could potentially analyze micro stool samples to detect viruses like COVID-19 and blood. It could potentially detect irritable bowel syndrome or colorectal cancer. And here was the part, forgive me, because I'm really just a 12 year old boy at heart um, that I wanted to ask you about. So the, the toilet could identify individual users by scanning their anuses, unique characteristics, or anal print. Now, we, 
<laughs> no, one, no one wants an anal print going off to some AI researcher. <laughs> but this is happening. This is actually, they're saying these units could cost between 300 and 1000 bucks. They could be rolled out in the next couple of years. Is this what life is going to hold for us? Yeah, let's hope not. A lot of that description was, I, I think uh, a lot of that, you know, the description you read sounds disturbing. Uh, having said that, I think uh, there are, you know, doctors that have to do many disturbing things for the good of the patients. But I think I, 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 I don't, I think uh, a lot of us will not want this in our homes anytime soon. But we'll see, no. you know, hey, doctors got to innovate. We'll, 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 we'll see what the FDA approves and what seems to be appropriate for patients that may need it, even if it doesn't seem like the right thing for everyone. Because you know that's going to turn into one of these things where you get false alarms every other day and you're in the doctor saying, oh, my anal print suggested I've got colorectal cancer. I don't it know. Just so, 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 sounds like there's a ton of internet memes to be created off what she just said. And I get, and I, I, <laughs> Listen, as somebody who's on camera for a living uh, a lot of my life, I, there, there are limits to how far I'm willing to go. And I think if I speak for a lot of people. <laughs> 